Hello, hello. I'm Jeanette from Jeanette Knits and welcome to my live. I, I'm sorry for being late to my own meeting or not late, depending on uh, what time is on your watch. <laughs> um, I'm just going to give everyone a minute to join and then I'll jump right into talking about um, Ciao Liene. Uh, about the upcoming pattern that's dropping next week and that is the Dublin Memory Socks. Um, I will talk about the inspiration, gauge and needle size, yarn and alternatives, um, the sizing, uh, construction and techniques, the charts and some possible modifications. And I will answer any questions. Ciao, Indra. Uh, hello. I will not attempt to try and pronounce um, all letters that are all together. <laughs> I'm a little bit dyslexic. I'll, I'll admit that. So I'm rather than butchering someone's Instagram handle, I will wave back. Uh, okay. Let me just get this up on my. Um, computer so I can see any questions that way I don't miss them hopefully hard myself there uh, hello hello I um, uh, so uh, First of all, I am wearing my newest design, uh, Amor de Verano tee, uh, which I just finished. I mean, I haven't weaved in the ends, in all honesty, but I really love it. So I thought I'd put it on. And to show you what's coming next month, or the one after. Oh no, yeah, next month, because today is the 1st of April. Woohoo! Um, can't believe a whole quarter has already gone. So. Let's talk about the socks. Um, these are the second design in uh, my memory sock uh, series. And the idea for this series uh, was uh, my friend Anete, who I, we do the Radam magazine together. And we went to Barcelona Knits Festival and that's where she had the idea uh, of uh, let's all buy some yarn and make the same pair of socks. Uh, so now anywhere we go, uh, we have to have the pair of socks, uh, matching pair of socks at work. So we went to Dublin in January for my birthday. Um, and there was uh, three of us there having the best time. Uh, we went to, I probably won't lie, but about 10 um, Aran sweater shops. <laughs> so you'll, you might notice that this uh, motive in the sock is uh, heavily inspired by all the cables on the Aran sweaters. And another thing that inspired this sock was the fact that it was quite chilly. Uh, but nevertheless really fun. So it was the perfect ta city to show off hand knit socks uh, and that's why I made them a little bit longer than usual, than my usual. So, uh, but because they're toe up, um, the length is easily adjusted and I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, so yeah, don't let that um, hold you back if a shorter sock is your jam. Um, so that's the inspiration part done. Um, yeah, I hope, I hope you can see the Aran <laughs> cabling in this and the little, um, I can't say it's a clover, uh, but there's so many signs and symbols, uh, that I could have used and it's just a little bit overwhelming. So I simplify it. <laughs> um, uh, so the gauge. Uh, gauge is um, 32 stitches in 10 centimeters or 4 inches 
and 42 rows. Um, because I am working with a yarn that I had never used before and not even like this sort of mix I hadn't considered for socks. Uh, it's called a um, Kremke Soul Wool Lazy Linen and it has 80% wool and 20% linen and when I Oh yeah, so we went to This Is Knit in Dublin, the, the best knitting shop in, in town because um, we did a proper yarn crawl um, but, but that one was by far the most memorable and up our uh, alley and when I saw the, the lazy linen yarn and I had to just try it, I, I really wanted to try it and I think it's the first time when I have washed a swatch or a sock uh, and it felt like it shrunk instead of stretching or becoming bigger it shrunk so yeah my row gauge is uncharacteristically small here uh, because of this yarn but because length uh, both the foot length and leg length are easily um, adjustable it's not really uh, a problem if you don't get the same gauge uh, row gauge um, I think the stitch gauge is what matters um, I used um, 2.25 or, or US size 1 needles uh, to knit these socks and um, so there's a bit that is just plain stockinette and then there's color work so if your gauge between the plain stockinette and color work differs then you might consider going up a needle size um, I did not uh, instead I'll tell you another trick that I uh, that I implemented in this design to make the fit better and um, yeah I don't want to jump from one point to another I'll just finish it up with the yarn part and then get into that mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so lazy linen is the main color and the contrast color is this amazing, um, let me not butcher the names, Chimera by River Knits in colorway Fire. Uh, I have since learned that uh, after meeting um, a River Knits at Unravel Festival that they are, uh, well, for the foreseeable future, no longer um, producing this colorway but there are other similar ones and stunning colorways um, so it's a color changing two ply yarn which looks which is first of all really exciting to knit with it's my favorite thing to do is is knit with with color changing yarns and you never know how the colors will play out so that that was really awesome. Actually, I bought one skein and I have knit three of these socks uh, because of reasons and I still have so much of it left so I could knit another three socks. Um, definitely worth uh, trying out that, that yarn. And yeah, I love the lazy linen. So I think there were multiple colors of this yarn um, and I picked this one because I thought that this is the best main color to go with this uh, contrast color uh, but there were also blue tones, green tones, green tones and what I noticed that a little bit of the linen um, well I don't know what, what exactly it's called in English but um, some unprocessed bits or, or what are they they are sticking out and they're more noticeable in the other colors but you can't see them in this uh, well I have a number zero two <laughs> colorway at all and they just look really almost shiny and slick and I love I love the feel of this sock <clears throat> so yeah but I any sock yarn will do as long as the stitch gauge uh, can be achieved uh, so yeah, any so it's a great great stash stash busting project as well. Um, 
sizing. So the pattern comes in three sizes and I um, I knit two socks in size one and one sock in size two. Um, but I think in the table, the, the thing that matters the most is uh, the foot circumference because the foot length and the leg length are really easy to adjust um, to any row gauge uh, that you, you might have. Uh, so yeah, that's what I would go by when choosing a size and um, I have intended the ease of zero uh, centimeters or inches. Uh, but I, I know that some people like a, a more fitted sock and you'd probably go down a size. Um, that's, that's all on the sizing part. Now the very exciting thing is the construction of this sock. And for the first time in my toe up sock um, collection, I am using a round toe. So instead of starting with a um, Judy's Magic cast on and then doing increases on both sides of the toe, I am starting with a crochet chain and picking up stitches in a circle and then doing increases to make this round toe. Um, I uh, don't think I have a preference uh, for uh, working round or uh, what's it called, tapered toe. Um, it, I was just wanted to try something different and yeah, the result, I'm really happy with it. Um, and I think that's how I was taught to knit socks cuff down and we'd always finish with a round toe um, in Latvia, where I come from. Um, and I didn't discover uh, a more like tra trapeze. I'm just making stuff up here, uh, toe, uh, until very recently when I um, started investigating sock knitting in the last couple of years. Um, so yeah, after the round toe, there's a straight bit where you just knit in the round and it's plain stock in it. So you watch TV and then you hit the sole gusset part and you just make increases for a little while on both sides of the sole and at the top there is a little bit of short row shaping um, I use Japanese short rows oh I forgot to mention that for the toe there is a YouTube video uh, showing the entire setup and first few rows of the increases and the same for the heel shaping. Um, there is a whole YouTube video on how I work this heel. Um, I'm using Japanese short rows, but any uh, short row <laughs> method would do. Um, uh, the pattern is written in a way that you can easily substitute and use your preferred short row method. Um, and then uh, after the short row shaping, there is a heel flap uh, worked in a reinforced uh, slip stitch pattern. And uh, then after the heel flap, we join in the round. Uh, so here is the trick of making these socks fit better because we, well, unless we're super, super experienced and have knit color work, uh, for, don't know, 30 plus years, um, we probably have a tendency to work the colorway, uh, color work a little bit tighter. And by design, color work um, has less give than plain stock in it. So in the gusset increases and the heel shaping, I am increasing a little bit more um, than to the the foot the leg stitches um, are there are more leg stitches than foot stitches is what I'm saying so it's not a problem to get this part over your heel and it fits nicer this way um, and yeah there are uh, then you then you work the leg this is where you introduce your main color and you work the leg and the pattern says that you can stop the leg at any point um, but I recommend you stop after you complete 
like a color work section and either here, there, or here, or there. And actually, um, once you get the hang of it, you could even extend it more. There is a row of increases uh, here to make this a little bit wider as we all have naturally legs go a little bit, what's the word? Bigger in circumference uh, from ankle upwards. Uh, so yeah, and it's pretty um, intuitive how to repeat that here as well if you wanted to add a third uh, section of this uh, cable um, pattern. And finally, we have a two by two ribbing and cast off is a stretchy bind off for which there is also a video because we know that, um, yeah, it could be hard to put the sock on if the bind off isn't stretching. And yeah, here it is uh, the best fitting color work sock uh, to date. <laughs> So that's all about the constructions. Uh, please uh, let me know if you have any questions. I think I saw a comment, um, but I missed that. Um, oh yeah, uh, Indra says, I tested this sock and love the construction and fits perfectly. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for testing. And I know you use the same yarn, um, the same contrast yarn, uh, different color colorway and it looks stunning so really really great uh Liana is wearing her socks right now amazing <laughs> i could put this on if i didn't have to show you um i hope they fit as well and i know that you used the same combination uh because you were with us in the in the in dublin in this is knit so that was that was awesome. Thank you for being there and making my birthday special. Um, so yeah. Oh, uh, one thing I wanted to mention about the charts is that the charts are again included for both um, light background and dark background. So if you choose a dark uh, main color, you can use the darker charts uh, so you didn't have to do the inversion mm -hmm. in your head every time you looked at the chart. Um, the last bit I wanted to cover was uh, the possible modifications. Um, I am pretty sure that you can modify the toe if round toe is not your uh, thing uh, to be the traditional um, uh, toe <laughs> and uh, yeah, work the rest of the sock because um, uh, what I what I heard from quite a few testers is that the way I've uh, started the sock, um, even though there's a video, if you're doing it with really tiny thin needles, it can be a bit fiddly and difficult to execute. And and well, obviously I I just wanted to try this and I I was prepared for some fiddling. Uh, but if you just want a smooth sailing, use your traditional toe and uh, get to the stitch count that's required for foot and then you can follow the pattern. Um, as I said so many times before, um, there are measurements to how long the sock should be uh, worked, uh, to where to start the gusset. So you can um, depending on your foot length, you can easily adjust the foot length by shortening or lengthening this section here. And you can easily, well, a little less easily because I guess if you want it to look tidy um, and finished and neat, you'd probably be stuck with like just certain places where you can finish the sock. There were some test knitters who had only um, completed one section and the sock mm -hmm. looks great as well. And I'm yet to see one with three. Uh, so yeah, surprise me <laughs> if you make it, tag, tag me for sure. I can't wait to see the color combinations. And if you've been to Dublin, uh, then I hope uh, while you work on this sock, you think back to the time there. If you live in Dublin, amazing. You must make these then. And um, yeah, that's it. I think I've covered um, 
all of that that I wanted and um, there have been no questions that I have seen and if I haven't shoot shoot it over one more time and I will answer but other than that yeah I guess I guess the the exciting part about this sock is that um, is the round toe it's a stretchy bind off and it's a real stash buster because you really need just a tiny little bit of the colorway color colorway color color way the contrast color um, Andrea uh, sorry I missed the start made the socks and they are fab thank you so much yes amazing to hear uh, hear that um, and again uh, the pattern is coming next week and everyone who is my newsletter subscriber will be the first to know uh, along with all the subscriber uh, exclusive discounts and perks and um, oh and most importantly uh, that what I've uh, completely forgotten to mention is that this is my 50th self-published pattern and there will be uh, proper celebrations. <laughs> We've got some uh, exciting things planned uh, to, to mark this very important milestone in my design career. Um, and uh, oh I'm seeing a question. Uh, I am late. Uh, oops. I'm late just uh, joining. Uh, what's the gorgeous project in the background? Oh, uh, so that is the mohair version of my uh, Datura cardigan that's currently in testing. I made a, a variegated one with blue-brown um, stripes uh, in zebra yarn uh, by Birth Street Yarn. Um, and then I realized that the yarn was so uh, busy for this model, I wanted to just um, make a light one that could show all the details. And I'm really naughty because I've cast on another project already without having finished this, but I just, you know, I I knit what I want when I want. <laughs> and somehow things end up finished or not. Um, Thank you very much, uh, Andrea, um, for your kind words. Um, yeah, knitting is my knitting is my escape, <laughs> so I have to knit. Um, but yeah, I think yeah, join join my newsletter if you haven't already. You will be uh, hearing all about the plans for our fiftieth pattern celebrations, and I think uh, I can probably let out that it might be a Cal, my, I will, I will say my first international Cal that will be run on Ravelry and there will be prizes and goodies and all, hopefully a great vibe. Uh, so until, until, until then, thank you so much for joining and I will uh, be in touch on social media or on the newsletter. And I hope you have a wonderful uh, knitful weekend.